Hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Subterrain Mines of Titan. It is a survival RPG, turn-based survival RPG, set on one of the moons of Saturn. I played the demo for this a while back and had a lot of fun with it, and so I've been eagerly awaiting the full release. So we're going to be, uh, let's see, we can be a bunch of different classes. I think I'm going to go scientist. I'm not sure what that's going to get us, but I think it lets me use my abilities more often, which sounds fun. And instead of being Addison Thorpe, uh, yeah, I, I'm so bad at, at naming. So we're just going to be Wabo. Nobody needs to know why I name myself Wabo. It's because I, I literally can't think of good names. I sit there, my my brain just goes blank, and then just, like, dumb things come in, like, Dog Dogson. Which, like, I could be, but that'd be boring, too. The Titan Excavation and Colonization Company, also known as Tech, was born of human ingenuity and compulsion to capture Saturn's largest moon for its precious resources. A oh, space bar to continue. This plan was in the making for longer was in the making longer before such a mission was even possible. It was a top priority under the leadership of CEO Atticus Froangelos. After a twist of fate known only to corporate insiders, Tech successfully populated several mining camps on Titan's surface. The company invested heavily in terraforming technology capable of transforming the atmosphere into atmosphere for human um as a consumption habitation. There we go. Sorry, I pressed space too early. Titan's first pioneers oversaw this process and created a new life for themselves, until one day, they were all gone. In conjunction with research and mercenary groups, Tech launched additional teams to Titan to investigate the cause of the first settlement's loss. One such team was sent to a remote location called Camp Huygen, where the new exploratory team was tasked with recovering assets from the deep mines. Unfortunately, their numbers were decimated under mysterious circumstances, and contact with Tech HQ was severed. The remaining residents of Cap Camp Huygen were stuck in survival mode, scraping together materials to make it to another day. And then they uncovered a stasis pod buried in the ruins. Could the person inside really be alive? Something stirs in the black void of existence as your consciousness begins to awaken once more. An explosion in your spirit brings the world back into view, though your senses are stifled. The liquid surrounding you drains, and the world comes crashing in. Loud machine gears and computerized beeps attack your senses. A sudden shock to the system from your mental restraints forces your first breath. Fresh air fills your lungs as if for the first time, sending your heart racing. Ah! The sound of your own scream makes your ha hair stand on end, and your olfactories catch the scent of chemicals and blood. Shadows on the other side of your glass enclosure move swiftly, your eyes dart from side to side, as you try to figure out what's happening and you push yourself to speak. Let, let, let me out! The cocoon of metal and glass you have come to know shakes and retracts, replacing the cold vapor with a warm light. The first person you see is a woman. Is that concern on her face or excitement? Hello, I hoped you'd be alive in there. The cryotube is old tech. Where? Stay calm, you're safe. This is Camp Huygen on Titan. I'm Dr. Shahane, head of our clinic. We've just taken you out of stasis. First things first, your body's motor function should have returned after the electrical cardioversion. Please try to move for me. We need to gather initial biometric readings to proceed. You wiggle the big toe on your right foot, ever so slightly, bringing a smile to your face in the doctors. However, when you push beyond that, your body is racked with pain. It hurts too much. The pain intensifies as sheer agony overtakes your body. Your newly found vision blurs and reality gets hazier by the minute. Dr. Shahane's expression grows fearful, though she remains calm under pressure. She backs away, the sound of her steps fades away as your senses are overwhelmed by your ever-increasing heartbeat. Isco! Isco! Get over here! Another figure rushes into the clinic, but your crawling skin and rising adrenaline levels make it difficult to focus on them. They seem just as freaked out as the doctor. Your vision goes red just before everything turns black. Suddenly you return to your familiar black void. 
Give me Dizepam. Stat. We need to stop those convulsions. These vitals are beyond critical. Do we want to waste more of our supply to save one patient? I'm not losing this one. This might be the key to everything. Slowly opening your eyes, you see Dr. Shahane watching you. Your heartbeat is slowed, but your blood feels energized, almost refreshed. Whoops. That was too much. Space is fast forward now. Welcome back. We thought we lost you, but you spontaneously recovered from whatever was affecting you. That was too close. Isco? Conditions are stable, Ida. Good. Can you try to move for me again? No time for pleasantries. You move two toes this time. And the notable lack of pain is a relief. Not really. I'm too weak, but at least it doesn't hurt anymore. Good. Progress is progress, and the absence of pain is a positive indicator. Now then, do you remember why you were in stasis? Any info you might have will help us understand your situation. I, I don't remember. My name is Wabo, but beyond that, it's a little fuzzy. Well, Wabo... You're placed... I should not have named myself Wabo, but whatever. You're placed in cryostasis outside of usual protocols. Your body wasn't appropriately cooled beforehand. And that's just one example. My guess is there was some sort of emergency that necessitated your stasis, am I correct? You shrug your shoulders as a reflex. Another milestone. Your pod was marked as belonging to First Camp Hugen Settlement, but the logs and metadata were too corrupted to recover. Thanks to ISCO, we successfully connected it to our systems despite its outdated tech. Might have contributed to your rocky awakening, but your stasis duration, your, t your tech clearance level, all remains a mystery. Put plainly, everyone here is part of tech's second mining operation. Everyone from the first settlement was reported missing about seven years ago, including you. And in terms of panic fills your mind as Dr. Shawnee's voice falls into the ether. The names, faces, and everything about your past escapes you. You have faint memories of joining tech and arriving on Titan, but nothing is entirely clear. You quickly come back to your senses. And in any case, your mind is a puzzle we hope to piece together. Only then can we can we know exactly what to do with you. And as the mind heals, your body will follow. For now, we focus on solvable problems. Everyone pulls their weight around here, so adding one more set of hands will be a godsend. Let's get you up and moving. Time and cryostasis left to your omniscope damage. And without that, you'll be flying blind around here. We need to get back get it back online for you. During your initial examination, we attempted to reactivate it, but the damage made it combust. Luckily, Isco and I were able to remove it before it left any lasting, lasting scars. Wow, thank you. No need to thank us. Saving you isn't entirely unselfish. Your survival is crucial to our own, after all. Exactly. Okay. So we've already replaced most of your Omniscope's controller inter, uh, controller's internals to make it compatible with our own system. We may even be able to upgrade it later, but we're limited on how much we have in the clinic. Do you remember how to use it? The basics, yeah. Your Omniscope is a multifunctional embedded information device composed of wireless lenses inserted into eyes via surgery remotely linked to, and a remotely linked AI unit. It can be used to communicate display maps or analyze objects. Another positive sign your memory is returning. Isco, hand me the controller. Sure thing, Ida. Despite your unorthodox bedside manner, you feel safe in Dr. Shahane's care and await the anesthetics for the Omniscope implantation. She keeps her attention on you while simultaneously configuring the controller like the expert she is. I know you can't move right now, but just as a com uh, just as a precaution, hold still. Surprisingly, you feel a hand on your head as Dr. Shahane starts the implantation procedure without painkillers. You shudder as a thin object slithers from your eye sockets. Ida injects another quickly after, and it quickly burrows into your skull. You hold your screams since the pain is preferable to what you experienced earlier. It doesn't take long for your vision, or before your vision is augment, augmented by your new Omniscope, overlaying vital data over everything you see. The displayed text takes time to normalize as your brain translate com, translates complex data streams into a language you can interpret. I know it's uncomfortable, but system updates are almost complete. Omniscope ID 24601, starting boot sequence. Hello, I'm Cassini, AI assistant connected to Omniscope ID 24601. Memory error detected, attempting recovery. Omniscope memory recovered. Please check Omniscope functionality through the tab key. Isco? Omniscope's operational at 89% synchronization. Good, good. I'll have Isco monitor that during your next checkup. I'll make note. We'll have you in tip-top shape soon. But you're at least feeling a little better, yes? 
Your omniscope is connected to your bioelectrical system, so moving your body should be easier now. So come on, please do get up. Get out of bed. Okay, new guide, movement. I should be able to figure it out pretty easily. Yeah, I can move WASD, I can go to bed. Doesn't look like we have anything to loot in here. You caught Ida in the middle of going through a long list of to-dos with Isco. They both notice you. Your arms and legs work, and you don't seem to be in pain. Great. The fact that I have to hit continue and then continue again is a little awkward. You'll, you'll find a change of clothes in the box behind the monitors. When you're done, I have more to share with you. Okay, how to equip items. Oh, interesting. Tab pulls up... Uh, tab pulls up kind of a complex movement system. Bit of a tight fit, but it'll do for now. She's right, you make a mental note to find new clothes later, but you hear the growl of your empty stomach. I hear it too. Use your omniscope to find the pub. Get something to ease your polyphagia. I already let them know you're coming, and they have food. Oh, their soup is to die for. Ask for Elp. He's a large man with a somehow perfect mustache, and lucky for you, he loves meeting new people. Keep it in mind that it's common to feel the need to binge eat after leaving cryostasis, but take it one bite at a time and listen to your body. Now go. Don't miss your next checkup. Okay. Let's see. So that's just our quest log. Talk to him. A lot of these. Doesn't look like there's anything else for me to really loot around here. So I'm just going to keep adventuring, I suppose. I'm going to turn tab off. Wait, here's a question. No. So tab shows me all the different like angles and ways I can move, but that's not particularly helpful. However, I think we do want to go around looting a lot of things. I don't know if this is supposed to be... I think this is her office. Okay, so... Doctor's uniform, and eh, not as good as the camp sportswear. Oh. No, Tab is actually useful. Because it shows me all of the different things that I can loot as I go by. Now, do we need all this stuff? I don't know, but the last the last subterranean game I played, there was like an extensive amount of like recycling and, and whatnot that you could do. And you could convert that up into better resources. I'm already digging these mechanics better, as it seems like it's going to be less copy and paste and... Um, and repetitive, hopefully, than the last game, but you never know. Personal storage. So we have blood extract, tissue extract, and osseous extract. Which is a little worrying? But yeah, we want to just kind of hoard everything into one small area. Any level of junk becomes immensely useful to me. Got a stimulant. Uh-oh. Somebody's stimming in the bathroom. That's maybe fine. I don't know. I don't know how much I need to be worried about it around here. Okay. Anything else? What is this? Troll for the pipe system. Yeah, don't interact with it. That is fair. Oh, this is where I was. Well, let's check the boxes anyway. Because it seems like a lot of this stuff is junk, which I'm going to be able to probably recon reconstitute as useful things. It's a little slow grabbing it all, but on the flip side, once I'm done, I'm loaded and ready to go. We got an ID tag. Job type. Okay, that's equipment. Key card junk. Task material usable. SE Akufo's ID tag. Huh. Okay, and then we have a scientist uniform. It's worse than what I've got on, though. Okay. 
Looks like there might actually be something on the other side of this, but that might actually not be the case. Okay. Elevator's out of order. We don't really know where we're going, do we? Inventory is full. Is it? I'll have... I'll have to take their word for it. Oh, nope, that's outside. I don't think we want to be outside right now. So this is personal storage. I guess we might as well... How do I know my inventory is full? Well, we'll figure it out. Okay, let's go to the canteen. So this is just our personal storage and it carries over. Nice. Alright, so let's talk to this guy. Oh, new face. My name's Alp Demir, owner of Alp's Pub. Stop by and try the food. You won't be disappointed. Still to ask about... Pull up a seat and tell me what you'd like. Sorry for the short menu. Options have dried up since Titan HQ supply chains were cut off. Actually, Isco said your soup is good. Can I try some of that? Just the words a cook wants to hear. I have a batch of Mercimex soup simmering right now. You're going to love it. Alp looks to see if anyone else is listening, even though the place is currently empty and speaks in a hushed tone. Listen, I have a bowl of soup with your name on it if you can help me out. Sounds fair, depending on what you need. Family of rats has set up shop in the pub cellar. Now I make my soup from the best lentils around, and the last thing I need is for this to get out and ruin my reputation. It's a family recipe, after all. So what I need you to do, my friend, and bring me five rat tails. You get your soup. Seems easy enough. Only five? Oh, these are no ordinary rats. Think of the rats you know on Earth. Now imagine that creature evolving in the worst conditions of Titan, and its great, 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 great grand spawn coming out hideously deformed. So five is more than enough, and should put the fear of God into the rest of them. Oh no, to stay out of my pub. You got a deal? Your stomach growls as a reminder that you have few options for food at the moment. Al holds out his hand and you shake it. He smiles and returns to his normal, boisterous speaking volume. Very good, my friend. Here's a key card to the cellar. Good luck. Okay. So, while we're here... I don't know who that person is. Miriam Katz. Hello, I'm Miriam. Server at the pub. Stop by if you haven't already. Alp's a great cook. Huh. It seems like we just have a lot of kind of random junk all over the place for me to potentially loot if I'm obsessive. Which I kind of am. I mean, my main goal here is to just grab as much stuff as I... Whatever is not nailed down, especially if it's just junk. I mean, nobody's, nobody's going to get mad at me for this, probably. Okay. Oop. That's a long autosave. Okay, this looks like a well taken care of sink. Something could be stored, but it's empty. Whoever's taking care of the kitchen must be obsessed with he uh hygiene. Oh, hygiene. Okay, we can break the barrels. Do we break the barrels? Probably not. I doubt anything would get me in trouble. Oh. I guess I can slap slap some barrels. Okay, I think we got everything. Yeah, composite wood. If there's more, I don't know. Okay, so these bring us down to B2. I don't know which one of these is going to have the rats in it, but... I'm just going to search the rest of it. So unfortunately our character is a scientist, so we might not actually be able to do a whole lot of useful things. Yet. Kind of depends on when we level up. Oh, this is... Definitely not the room I'm supposed to be in. Ooh. Bunch of scuffed looking suits? And cloth and stuff. Damaged armor, but high recycled yield. Recycle yields. Okay, so it's this one.
Okay. And I hear a rat. I don't see him yet. I got to turn turn down those sound effects, though. Oh. Yeah, this would do it. Kinda. I'm just not a big fan of sound effects. I might turn down the UI sound effects as well. Okay, slingshot. We can drop items. We can also take all. Wait. Oh, that actually... Drop items. Take all. If there are multiple items nearby, press F to see a list. And I can just snag them all. Okay, so I've got a cleaver and a sturdy shield. I'm glad this has AoE looting. This would be annoying without it. Okay, how to attack. I mean, it's pretty much just click on an enemy. As is moving to the same location. Uh, let's see, can I check my inventory real quick? Not chunk, material, usable, equipment. So we have a mop, we also have a slingshot. Okay, so how do I swap weapon? Space for next turn. That's quick bar. Back quotes. Ah. Also known as tilde. Out of pellets. I'd have to equip the pellets. Okay. I'm getting messed up a little bit. By the rats. I sincerely hope they're not healing. But I may also be gaining stats. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go here. They could be healing. Usable. Okay, I got a first aid kit. Pop it. I'll put it in my quick slot. Did not work. Oh no, there it is. Alright. Gonna wait for the rat to get closer. Okay. Oh, they can stack up, too. There we go. I suppose I'm just going to be training my stats here on rats. These rats are, um, tougher than I was expecting. Just loot everything. There we go. Missed. Loot everything. So it seems like loot looting doesn't take any time. Okay, we now have perk, shield mastery, and upper hand. Probably hit another med kit at this point. I'm dying over here. How much HP does this rat have? Not much. Okay, Titan Rat. I think they're healing. Well, this is why I'm a complete loot monger. Because 
because I actually got enough resources that I can kind of deal with this. Kinda. I think I got them all. Okay, so we got a lot of perks. Let's check the guide. Adrenaline costs. So that's how we do things. So perk window shows special abilities, including perks effects. Cooldown, passive perks are ongoing, always in effect. Perks must be equipped in a quick slot and activated when needed. Get a perk point every time they gain a level. These points can be spent to unlock available perks in the perk window. Okay, some perks require adrenaline points for activation. Cool. Hungry, yawning, and thirsty. Oh, maybe that's part of the reason why I'm having trouble. Uh, let's see. Drink some water. Eat some bread. I know we were given soup. Let's see. Break all of these. Oh, my weapon broke. Yeah, that tracks. Okay. And we might as well just kind of slap these barrels open for the time being. I wonder if this got harder if I just had an easier time on the not-scientist character. I don't know. Okay, so we're just going to slap our way through everything. Though I guess I should take a look at the perk window real quick. See if I can find anything useful. Nothing there. One more broken barrel. Or breakable barrel. Which seems worth it. Okay. I think that's everything I can possibly get here. So let's let's get back out. I was a uh, tougher rat fight than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so where did he go? Is he downstairs? He might be downstairs. If you eat, my food will remind you of home. We're tougher than they looked, but it brought back five rat tails. Well, six if you count this one that... Uh, this one that splits off at the end. Great work. Let me look at you. Looks for any lasting wounds and smiles when he finds none. He's the warmest personality you've encountered so far, but there's a mystery behind his eyes as well. A few scratches never hurt anybody, or never hurt nobody, right? As promised, the best soup on Titan. Some rations for the road, and I'll even throw in some credits for the extra tail. Got food, water, and credits. First one's free, but if you have any craving for more delicious food, I'll have to charge you. Gotta keep the lights on. Be sure to eat more often. I'm sure, uh, be sure to eat often. I'm sure you're hungry after from a long day of checkups and system registration for you. My Omniscope is connected, but nobody mentioned, mentioned registering. What? Registering is the only way to fully use the camp system, my friend. David's in charge of the supply facility. You should go see him. And if nobody said it yet, welcome to Camp Hugan. Adjusting to life here might take some time, uh, might take some time, but you'll get there. Well, gotta get ready for the lunch rush, so I'll leave you to it. Come back anytime. Alp seems like a genuinely kind soul. You wave to the large man as you leave. Okay, water and bread. And we should go find David. Boy, there's a lot of tutorials. I think mostly my character is just sleepy. Which I probably should have dealt with. Wait, there's another cook around here? I thought they were kind of short-staffed. Name's Ulf, mixologist at the pub. He used to be a miner, but who wasn't nowadays? <laughs> who, are, who you were isn't who you are, though, right? Okay, so it looks like we're pretty much tapped out on this area. So there's something sparkling here. What if the NPCs drop these stuff? Oh, an ID tag. Okay, usable equipment, key card, junk. Store junk items. Okay, so we've got servers uniforms. We also have a shabby mop. And a rust another rusty cleaver. I'll put those away. I don't know if I can recycle things 
from here. Let's see, what is this? Store all junk material items. We have a surprisingly high, large amount of food. Okay, so we're looking for supply, probably over here. And let us go back to our loot mongering ways, because I'm pretty sure I get to recycle things very soon. Oh, I see. That's a vending machine. Some kind of panel. Okay. Not useful. Go back to junk. Okay. Counter of supply. It seems to be an old window of this supply facility. Next to the rusty monitor, there are scattered papers that seem to have organized the supplies of the facility. Hey, is anyone here? Here's someone coming from the ins coming from the inside. Hi, I'm here to register. My name is the rugged looking woman behind the desk holds up a finger while she finishes clicking on her keyboard. Her nameplate reads Katarina. She seems to have a chip on her shoulder when she finally addresses you. They just make them younger and younger. Registering, huh? Katarina rolls her eyes, then presses a button on the desk. Sending someone to your office for registration. Make sure to close your browsers. David will see you. He's just through there. Katarina goes back to ignoring you as you open the door and walk in. David operates behind a much more impressive computer setup, and his eyes light up when you enter. Hey, when Katarina said the thing about my browsers, I assure you she was just kidding. <laughs> I'm glad, excited to meet a new recruit, though. I'm David Almanza, but everyone just calls me the house. Katarina injects through the intercom. No one calls you that, David. Stop trying to make the house happen. David continues through an awkward chuckle. Anyway, let's get started. What's your name? Wavo. Entered, but I must admit, you look more like a maverick to me. Has a certain ring to it, right? I wonder if I'd named myself Maverick, if he would have actually, uh, if the dialogue would have been different. David pulls a device resembling a giant magnifying glass from his desk. Desk. It's attached to a number mu number of multicolored cables feeding into various systems. This will read data from your Omniscope lenses and complete your registration. Stand on the mark and then look up. Down, left, right, right, left, right, as quickly as possible. The device shines a laser that stings your lenses slightly, but it's over pretty quickly. Streams of data flash in and out of your vision for a moment. And that's it. You should now be able to connect to any of our systems or items you might find around the camp. David brings you to a yellow box with flashing lights to attract potential buyers. This one says David's Emporium. Now that you're in the system, you can trade various items through aptly named trade boxes. This is my store here. While other sellers might be cheaper, my inventory selection can't be beat. I'll buy and sell pretty much anything. Business is business. David leads you to a long red box outside of his office. It's protected by heavy locks and anti-theft protective measures deactivate as you approach, reacting to the presence of your Omniscope. You can also store anything you own in the storage box to avoid having to lug it around. There are several, several of these around camp, but your personal items are coded to your Omniscope, so no one can steal them. Even better, Camp, camp Huygen was established as a processing settlement, so you won't be surprised that we have a, one of the most sophisticated production systems around. You can take almost anything and turn it into something useful. Let me explain how to use your item product, our item production pipeline before I let you go. It's essential to life in, here in camp. For starters, grab that junk next to you. Receive a pile of junk. Got it. What's next? Once you've collected some items, you can put them in your storage and then perform one of three requests. Craft request spits out a brand spanking new item, anything from better to gear to medicine. Research unlocks more things to be crafted by analyzing blueprints and other researchable items. Recycle is my favorite because it takes an item and breaks it down to its most usable parts. Then you can use those new pieces to craft. Sounds confusing. Remember, I just woke up after years in the tube. No worries. If you need to remember how to do it, just check out journal, guide, and your omniscope for a refresher. Okay. Plus, what better way to learn than doing right now? Go to your storage, open the item production menu, and recycle the pile of junk you just picked up. Give it a shot. Hey, let me do the thing. Okay, store all junk items. So you put the item in the storage, David pops out to talk to you. Well done, for any research, recycling, and crafting requests, put all necessary items in there to begin with. Open the item production. I don't remember the tutorial being this handholdy. 
Okay, so we have personal storage. Okay, so how do we do this? Oh, it's craft. At the top? Because I can see this stuff. Is it N? Oh. Oh, I just pull it up from anywhere, maybe. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, we might as well just recycle some of these. Not started idling and wandering. Wait, what? What is this? Oh, wait. Tracking? I... I... What? Okay, let's turn that off. Oh, there. Okay, so that tracking window is useful, but just not right now. Okay, so is there a reason to... No, probably not. Where's that pile of junk? There it is. Let's put that on top. And probably just rip through a lot of these. I'm pretty sure most of this is nothing. Okay, item production. How do I know when it's done? It's queued. Okay. So production UI shortcut. Let's see, some items can be recycled. Let's see. Place items to be recycled in personal storage. Open the production UI, select recycle. Left click the recycle icon to add it to the queue. So do I just have to wait then? I I suppose. All right, let's just wander around for a little while. Oh. After you're done with the recycle process, David pops out to praise you. Good job. Now you have the materials you need to make something. Let's research an item. Take this blueprint, place in your storage. Okay, bear trap. Okay, where's that blueprint? Trap? Put it in there. Now if we go back to production, I see. And I probably just have to wait some, wait some time. Once your research is completed, David shows up again, almost like he was lurking nearby. Great, last step is to actually craft the bear trap, go to the item production menu, okay. I I do not remember this tutorial being this handholdy, but I also don't know if it was actually in the game. There it is. Okay, so are we free to do whatever then? All right, let's go back to production. Wait, why is the rest of it hidden? Oh, crafted item from storage into your bag. Got it. Is is it considered a weapon? No. Claw trap. There we go. I think I got it. This is a big help, David. Good. And only become more intuitive as you use it. Remember, if you're unsure about just about anything, the guide is your friend. So yeah, that was a lot. I hope it made sense, but it's getting close to quitting time now. If you don't have a place to stay, talk with, talk with Mr. Lau. I think a room just opened up after the last expedition underground, so tell him you want a bed. Just thinking of a nice warm bed causes your body to reflexively yawn, which makes David yawn as well. Good luck, Maverick. Be sure to come back from time to time. We can swap camp stories. Okay. So I wanted to check... Is there, are there any blueprints that I can pull off of this? Because there's certainly a lot of resources, some of which might actually be quite useful. Yeah, 
Yeah, it should make mining more efficient. So that might be good. How much money do I have, though? Actually, a decent chunk. Which of these has more durability on it? That one. Okay, how's my slingshot doing? Mostly fine. Okay, we don't have many pellets left. Let's see, water bandage. I don't think I have many bandages. We have a decent amount of water, so we don't need to worry about that. I've got an amount of first aid kits. I kind of wish I could stack them, but whatever. Let's buy an antitoxin and a splint as well. Okay, so while we're here, what else can I make now that we actually have the ability to do so? So I can craft... Okay, I can craft quite a lot. Including more pellets, which isn't the worst idea. Sleeping bag. So I can sleep wherever. Lamp, oxygen canister, repair kit. 30 durability at the expense of max durability. And we can also just recycle a bunch of things. I'm thinking I just recycle pretty much everything. Let's see. Plastic. Cycles into nanocellulose. Oh, wait. It costs me money to recycle? What? Oh, that was my slingshot. I don't want to use that. Okay. Okay. Did I loot this for all it's worth? I did. Anything else in here? No. Yes. But yeah, it costs money to recycle? This capitalist future sucks. Okay, can I interact with this? No. All right, let's, let's go find Mr. Lau. I don't like the sound effects for the like, hey, he's this direction. But I do appreciate its effectiveness. Because otherwise I'd have to actually track down some characters. I guess let's, uh, let's stop tracking him. We know where he is at this point. My inventory is full. It's probably this one. More stims. I am loaded on support items. Which is actually super nice. Oh, don't want to use the cleaver to break these things. Okay, what do we have? Doors locked without a key card. These are the showers. All right, let's just get over here. How tired is my character? Pretty tired. I'll have to eat some food too. Okay, and this seems to be kind of a crafting garage kind of deal. Well. Let's see. Anything else? These are the rooms. Oh, maybe I could have actually looted that. Am I a bad person for possibly robbing all these people? No, it's all scrap junk. Rusty spoons and the like. I don't think anybody's ever going to miss any of this stuff. I, on the other hand, will benefit from it greatly. Nope. Let's see. So this is Octavio Corso, X minor, but there's nothing to talk about. Okay, let's track this man. Probably this guy? Yep. 
Hello, I'm Wabo. I know, I was wondering when you'd arrive. You were expecting me? Of course, I make my business to know everyone in camp. Knowledge is key to humanity's survival, know what I mean? Let me balance the scales by introducing myself. You can call me Mr. Lau. I run ca Hugin Camp's residential quarter. If you notice how comfortable it feels around here, it's due to my expert leadership. My little favor to everyone in the camp. Favor? Yes, it isn't cheap to keep the lights on, and I'm practically in the red, trying to make sure everyone gets a good night's rest. W wait in the red? You know, losing money. Oh my goodness, the camp would have collapsed after closing the mine had I not implemented my credit system. It's a transparent local currency system that rewards the most significant contributors, and now you're part of the system. It might seem like a relic of the past, but history can teach valuable lessons. I'm so tired that bed over there looks terribly inviting. Well, recently we finished cleanup of one of our rare solo rooms, of course. Something like that comes with a price tag, and we're ready, already beyond capacity, so sharing is common. I have a few credits, but you're making it sound like what I have is probably insufficient. Between you and me, I get an idiot in here every other day looking for a bed. I usually have to turn them away. You caught me on a nice day, though. Mr. Lau looks you up and down. He doesn't seem impressed. Look, I just got out of cryostasis, so I'm hoping there's an agreement we can come to. I'm fragile right now. Rule number one, work, earn credits, and trade them for goods, food, or room to rent. Your choice is yours, your choice since you earned them, but nothing comes for free. Especially now that supplies from HQ are dwindling and everyone's scrounging for scraps. So where can I work to earn credits for your room? I run the residential area, not a temp agency. Remember, Elp saying something about a cave of mushrooms. You'd have to talk to him for details. I already said more than I should have for free anyway. Please, Mr. Lau, for me to have energy to work, I need to sleep. Can you make an exception? Sucks his teeth and tilts his head. Your weakened state means you're no good to him in your current condition. Well, don't say Mr. Lau isn't the most gracious man on Titan. I'll give you the room for now in exchange for a favor in the future. After that, you start paying like everyone else. You hardly have the strength to respond, but you hope the favor doesn't involve more rats. Mr. Lau goes to his desk, opens a drawer, and takes out a key card. As he approaches, he holds it out. When you grab it, he doesn't let go. By accepting this key card, you acknowledge all terms and conditions of renting a renting a room here and agree to fulfill a favor from Mr. Lau. If you agree, just say I. I. Receive a key card. Personal room for Mr. Lau. I'm not always this charitable, but make sure that sure to tell everyone that Mr. Lau did for you today. You must scratch each other's backs around here, but you must also start paying for this room in the very near future, or your room card will be deactivated. It'd be unfair to the other tenants if they paid and you didn't have to, right? Now follow me. Stupid space capitalism. Okay, here's your room. For now, sleep. Tomorrow we talk favors and future payments. As Mr. Lau leaves, your door makes an audible chunk noise, and a red light turns on to indicate it's now locked. Room smells like a mix of, mix of chlorine and blood. Whatever happened to free up this room wasn't pretty, only recently scrubbed. It looks clean enough, though, and staying awake is getting cha more challenging by the second. But first, I loot the boots and the desk. Ooh, splint bandage and a first aid kit, but first sleep. Think about everything you went through today. What did I wake up to? Camp Hugin, this camp is in shambles. One thing is for certain though, this place runs on credits first and foremost, so tomorrow, start earning my keep. Humming from machines outside your window lulls you into a trance, and silence eventually envelops you. As your head hits the pillow. The realization of the first Titan settlement teams, my team's disappearance, shook me to my core. All the friendly faces were muddled in my mind, and all the hopes of the settlers were dashed. I can't believe an entire settlement could be wiped out and forgotten so quickly. What happened to everyone? From what I gathered, Camp Hugin is on its last legs. Being disconnected from Tech HQ, barely maintained equipment, and food supplies running low make for a terrifying combination. This small group of people have banded together for survival, but without the resources from the mine, they won't last long. Is the camp being forgotten just like their first settlement? Reaching Tech HQ is impossible at the moment. The mine is a death trap, but I can't just sit around waiting to die. No choice but to help Camp Hugin survive, at least until another option reveals itself. Perhaps the answer lies below. Hopefully I'll figure out what happened to the first settlement along the way.
You wake up abruptly and take a moment to shake off the eeriness of your dream. You almost miss the nothingness of the cryopod, but it was also nice to dream again. Something's always better than nothing. You stand, adjust your gear, and take a deep breath. Time to talk to Elp about some fungus. Okay, so we have some level of a time limit here. Wait, turns left? Oh. Okay. So there is a time limit. Being listed in the corner. Let's take a look at these. So we've got camp sportswear, camp sportswear. Move that over. What about these? Worker's uniform and better, or some other boots. They're not better. I also have a crowbar and a cleaver. I think the big thing I need for the most part is probably weapons. I like it how you can craft a cleaver. But yeah, it costs 100 credits and I only have three. I guess I'm going to have to go sell some stuff. So let's go back down here. Question is, can I sell stuff from here? I can. That's not even that bad. Okay, so let's let's take a look at our junk. These are materials. Okay, so we can sell blue shards. Seems to be our our money resource. as good as I'd like it to be, but whatever. Uh, let's see. So I think I'm just going to make a pair of rusty cleavers. I guess we can retrieve it next time we're nearby. Uh, let's see. I fortify the reactors by placing turrets and stuff. Okay. But yeah, so we have a time limit, but it looks like it scales kind of depending on our actions. So currently the time limit is actually going up, which is good. Okay, so where's Elp? In his bedroom? Did I take damage? Probably because I'm hungry and thirsty. Beauty, my food will remind you of home. Uh, let's see, what does he have in stock? He does actually have weapons. But I don't have enough money, I don't think. I could get some more stuff, but... Yeah, Elp, can I ask you something? Of course. Let's talk in my office. Elp leads you back to the pub, his office. Two of you sit at the bar, and the bartender, Ulf, is currently wiping it down. So, back so soon. You couldn't stay away from my food, eh? It was delicious, but I'm mostly looking for a job. Need help around here. Oh, sorry. If we were a bigger pub, I could hire you, but I already have Miriam still serving, and Ulf acting as our official mascot. Ulf lets out a giant fake laugh as he approaches. Go ahead and yuck it up, Elp. You can never replace me. Maybe I'll give up bartending and have you back to mixing drink drinks with names you can't even remember, remember, huh? You know, I kid, Ulf. Sheesh, so sensitive. Elp gives Ulf a smile and a wink, and the hardened bartender does the same. They're friends, after all. He turns his attention to you. Do you see? I have no work for you here. What about some work involving mushrooms? Oh, thanks for reminding me. Yes, some people ventured in the cave north northeast of camp. They brought me a few delicious mushrooms, but I need a lot more. The right combination of these uh, combination of these mushrooms and my private stash of peppers from Earth. This could be the key to bringing my family's mantar's soat to Titan. The more we can forge around here helps save on supplies, so this could be a turning point for us. Mushrooms make a great meat soup substitute, which we need since we lost connection to HQ. It's been a while since I've even seen a mushroom, let alone eaten one. I'm sure you won't be disappointed, my friend. Take this to help dig up mushrooms and come back with as many as you can carry. At least ten, though. Also, the cave is really dark, so you don't want to go there without a light. Here, I'll let you use my old lamp. It doesn't have much power left, but if you need more, I'm sure you'll be a re resourceful enough fella to make a request of it. Craft one. Oh, um, wait, to be crafted more for you or purchase them from the camp shop. I think Judith, al Judith also sells them. Have fun mushroom hunting. Okay, got a scythe, got a lamp. And we can go get some stuff. Let's see about making a lamp. 
Also costs 100 cripes. Okay, let's go back to this menu for a second. I think we need slightly less that I'm carrying around. It's, I mean, it's just too much. Is there a sort button? Yes. Okay, I probably don't need this much stimulant. In fact, I don't even know if I want stimulant. Because I'm probably not going to use it. This seems like a reasonable amount of space. Store all junk materials. Key cards. We've got some spare armor and some other things. I think this should be good. And he said it doesn't have much power left, but I think we're good. At least for now. So where does this go? Oh, it just takes us out. Alright, let's go find that... That mushroom cave. I think it was here? No. I don't actually know what this is. It's fine. Um, We'll come back to this later. I've just been spending too much time talking to folks, and it seems like it's about time that I actually start... ...messing with some things. Is this the mine? No, this is the airship. I don't know where the cave is. This might be it? No, this is the comms facility. Do we have a map? No, we do not. Let's just talk to this random person. If it isn't Ida's experiment, you know me? I'm Claudia, head of security. The guards are the last tech employees on Titan. Everyone else here is on contract, so yeah, nothing happens around here without me knowing it. Any tips on surviving in camp? Steer clear of me and mine. Keep your nose clean and we won't have problems. Hmm. This ain't... This ain't the cave. I thought the cave was much easier to find. Okay. Yeah, farmers, some other stuff. There's just a lot of dialogue. Like, I appreciate it, but I also want to find this cave and, and do a little bit of exploration before we're done for the day. So this is the groundwater station. Which, like, I'm, I'm sure... Uh, dunce. I'm sure I'm actually going to have to go into these places and do things with them later. There's the cave. Oh, did I forget to grab my cleavers? It's okay, we got some other stuff. Okay, hold up. Inventory. Oh. It's depleted. Okay, so we can't get more from it now. We also have that lamp. Let's see. Toggle light. Semicolon. Okay, so we got a flashlight on. Let's see. And I've got... Eh, it doesn't seem like there's more I can do that direction. Grab as many mushrooms as we can. I know there's there's baddies that show up in here eventually. But I think we have to go kind of... We have to go somewhat deeper. There they are. 81%. That seems doable. How much HP does it have? Okay. Yeah, so this slingshot actually works reasonably well for me, at least right now. It's not perfect, but big ups, my stats seem to be going up over time. 
So why don't we actually check this? Inventory production journal. We know about that. Perks. So I have a couple. So how many perk points do I have? One. It's so one-handed melee mastery. Melee accuracy. Dodge chance, fumble chance. So that's good. Shield mastery, upper hand. But that's purely for one-handed melee. We also have survival. So job scientist item. So we have going green. So harvest efficiency goes up based on perception over survival or something like that. Let's see. Also rock breaker. So we have adrenaline. When adrenaline is greater than seven, extra accuracy, range accuracy, and reduced fumble chance. It's not terrible. We also have pull out. Ability to retrieve from enemy attacks. So it reduces attack of opportunity and then also quick quick dash. Bow mastery, rifle mastery, pistol mastery, two-handed melee mastery. We also have upper hand. Boost my stats for a short period of time. Hmm, this is tough. I think we get other perks as we go along. My main problem is I don't know what my ideal build here is. So we can also increase my, my block chance and some other things. Discover range through by three. What about this one? Nanobots. Oh, bow mastery is probably my slingshot. Okay, well, what else do we have? We haven't been this direction. It feels like I'm doing better than last time I, I played this game. And that might just be a, a me thing. That maybe I just went for like pure Krongle build and didn't think too hard about like... Okay, survival proficiency is up and it's depleted. Yeah, I might not have been thinking too much about tactical play or, like, other things. We do have enough mushrooms, so I could actually leave, but I might as well stick it out for at least a little while. Because if I can keep going, if I can grab some other stuff... I'll be a happy camper. Nothing here. Okay, my character is alert. Ah. That nah, didn't work. Okay, so it looks like there's a couple of these. Or it's the same creature. Yeah, do they do they heal over time? They might. Oh, I should have been paying attention to these. Okay, that's depleted. So, don't mine it more. Then we've got... Whatever this sucker is. Titan Beetle. Okay. This sucker hurts. Got it. Beetle shells. Do we use a med item? Yeah, I'll use one first aid kit. Because we've got another one. I don't know what this sucker is. Titan slug. Okay, so it's got ranged attacks. I'm out of pellets. Please die. Okay, so we have counter stance. That hurts a bit. Grab these. We have a ladder down, but I, I definitely don't want to take that yet. Methane ore. Yeah, I might want to look into means of healing myself slowly. Actually, speaking of healing myself slowly, 
off the water. Okay, do not eat the cave mushrooms. Did I put all of my... I did put all of my bread away. So which of these has the least amount of durability? Because, yeah, if I can make my character into a fast healing mutant, that would be lovely. couple of ways of going down, too. But I think I want to leave that for later. Okay, I'm healing. I think you heal naturally, as long as your character isn't too hungry. Okay, this is probably going to hurt. Okay, I can move diagonally. Yeah, the problem is I don't have much for ranged attacks. And I know I'm going to get wrecked just fighting these two. Maybe. Okay, why don't we check our perk window? Nope, that's not it. Perks, K. Okay. So, can't do bow mastery. We have adrenaline. We have quick dash. Which isn't a bad idea. Actually, I think quick dash is, is the play here. And we want to put that on the quick slots. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to just leave. Oh, is I bleeding? Well, okay, we have an autosave at the very least. Looks like it was whenever I completed that quest. Yeah, the problem is I ran out of ammo at a bad time, and yeah, I had those two guys chasing me. I shouldn't have tried to fight them. I should have just ran, but whatever. Oh, this isn't so bad. Kicked me back a little bit, but tolerably so. Okay, well, one way or another, I think this is a good stopping point, at least for now. Yeah, this is not an easy game. It's a charming one, though. It does a lot of what I like in, like, turn-based games. I'm reminded heavily of Stone Shard. Um, but obviously with more of a focus on survival gameplay and, like, careful exploration and having to worry about needs and food and stuff. I guess you kind of did in Stone Shard, but it wasn't, it wasn't quite as, like, I don't know. It wasn't quite as much, much of a focus in Stone Shard from what I remember. Like, yeah, you, you had to have food and water. Uh, you did have to worry about bleeding, and it was just as merciless in a lot of ways. Which, I don't know. I guess I personally like quite a bit. Okay, let's just wait. Okay. Right. And I need to actually put Quick Dash on my bar. Oh, and it cornered itself. Sick. That makes my life considerably easier compared to last time. So, what I should do is probably eat and, eat and drink. Might as well actually get the acid resistance in case these guys do an acid attack. Or doing an acid attack. Okay, well, anyway. I might as well mention as part of this that Subterrain Mines of Titan is available now on Steam. Did it just leave? There, there it is. Uh, so if you want to pick it up and play it yourselves, just follow the link in the description below. I don't know if it's available on other platforms yet. Ouch. But it's fine. I really do like the fact that your stats level up kind of independently. As a neat feature. There's a lot of things that'll probably be complementary of 
as part of this game. But for now, at least, is there anything else for me to really say? No, not over much. So if you like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And Okay, so that is properly depleted. Okay. I don't know if it wastes durability here. Uh, and if you want to see more rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to check out and show off. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.